Hey everyone! Post weekend launch update. So, how did it go? It was terrible. <laughs> well, not totally. Running Games have put out some new patches, solving not all but many of the issues that the people were very vocal about. And there's a lot of hate going on to Path of Exile 2 right now, but we'll go through those. But basically, what happened? Well, servers were down for like three hours. Oh my god, let me in! Open Resty, what is an open Resty? And after those three hours, the servers were pretty okay. You could play the game, people came in, and it was pretty fine for the most part. Uh, what was not fine though, was the website. The website was down for the major period of that launch day. And here's the issue with that. For those people who purchased and didn't redeem their Steam key, those people could not play the game on Steam because you had to redeem the Steam key on the website. And because it was crashed down for the whole like release day, yeah, they couldn't really get into the game, which was a real bummer. But maybe the Path of Exile 2 website was fine. I don't remember, so don't quote me on this, but if the Path of Exile 2 website was fine, they maybe could download the main client from there and then play on that. But as far as Steam, they were they were effed if they didn't download or acquire the Steam key beforehand the crash happened. But that's that. And now, passwords, pa patch notes. Some th interesting things I want to go through. Actually, before that, let's talk about... We're in the game, here's my character. I am level right now 39. I've been playing for slash... I've been playing for 22 hours. I think I've been AFK for a couple of those hours, actually. So take me, a casual gamer that plays Diablo 4 coming to the uh, uh, Path of Exile 2. I'm struggling, okay? But it's not impossible, and many more people are struggling even more than me. Well, let's see here. I've played through Acts 1 to 3. It's going fine. We're gaming, right? Yes, I'm pretty slow, but it's fine. It's, it's not a race, right? And it's actually fun. The game is very challenging, okay? The, play, the, the people that says get good, don't, don't listen to them. The game is challenging, but it's supposed to be, and it's fun. Because you have to solve like the issues that appear for you. So for me, it was a lot of build issues and then my gearing. And it's, I find that interesting to solve. But for many of the people who doesn't understand how to use the tools that are in the game to solve these problems, it can be very daunting and annoying. So I just want to go through some, some things here that people might not understand of the game. So first off, this game is not Path of Exile 1. It's very different. So many people think that, oh, this is going to be the successor of Path of Exile 1, the Path of Exile 2 is going to be same, same, but still new. No, no, it's a completely different game, okay? There's a different ball field here. Very different. Okay, so I want to show you this. This is my staff that I've been using since Act 1, okay? This staff dropped when I was low level, and uh, it was a ma blue magic item, yeah? So it only had two stats, and those two stats were plus two level to all cold spells and 20 maximum mana. This staff has carried me from Act 1 all the way up till this point. This will tell you that how important fixing your own gear and how, like, you might not find anything better for so long. I found this as a drop, and I saw plus two level for all cold spells. That's really good. It's really good because plus level to your gems the majority damage from your gems comes to the levels. So if we check here, you can see here on my Frostbolt and Ice Nova, you see my DPS here. And if, as soon as I equip my staff with uh, more level to cold spells, you can see that the DPS significantly increases. So a very nice boost to your DPS is your level on those skill gems. So yeah, this is carrying me a long way. And how I made this staff into a rear is that I used uh, this orb called... Uh, I think it's a regal. I think it's this one. I'll put her up anyways. But yeah, so this game wants you to use these um, crafting materials and craft. Some things that people don't, don't do is they don't check the vendors. The vendors sometimes has really good stuff. Like check this one for out, for example. This one is insane. Grand skill, level 10 lightning bolt, and then 91 increased lightning damage. Basically, it almost doubles your lightning damage this staff that's crazy good so what i would do with this staff is equip well, let's see if you if we hold alt we can see that it has a prefix and a suffix a magic item can only have two uh fixes i don't know what they call them but ability uh, stats things 
And it already has that, so I can't use an Orb of Augmentation to give it an extra stat. But these are really good. Uh, the life thing is pretty shit, uh, but uh, the lightning damage is giga. So what I would do with this is if I have that orb that would make a magic item into a rare, I would slap that on this thing. This thing would rock and probably get something good. Maybe not, maybe like plus to some electric spells, but maybe you would get like cast speed, which is really good, increased DPS, you know, the faster you hate, the, f the more DPS you do. Or maybe intelligence that also increases um, your mana, so you can spam more abilities. We can see here that intelligence, uh, every one intelligence gives two mana, so yeah. You can see that. So it's really important to check a look here. So yeah, most of my gear is low level. If we check here, I'm level 39, right? I should have high level gear. I don't. Level 10 staff, level 16 armor, and rings. And look, level 8! But it gives me resistance, it gives me health, it gives me intelligence. It's a pretty okay ring. It's not bad, but it's not great by any means. This is the, I think this is the highest level. Level 4 belt! See, I haven't changed belt since freaking Act 1 first area, dude. It's crazy. I haven't found a better belt. Maybe I have to try and make one. So, you see, very, very, very simple low-level gear can carry you through most things if you just can find them. For example, the staff I just saw from this vendor. This thing can totally carry you. Now, this is level 36, but you could find something similar in lower level. Trust me. Use the vendors and use your material. They drop a ton. And if, you have a, if you're struggling with getting these crafting materials, what you should, should do is pick up every blue and rare item that the monsters drops. The blue items, you uh, if, if you're lacking these, the transmutation shards, uh, you want to go to a vendor that you can disenchant items and you want to disenchant those magic items to get these things. Uh, if you're full of those like me, I have lots of them, I would just sell them for gold because gold is very important here. Gold uh, gives you respect, so you can respect uh, points on the skill tree that you don't, you don't find any good. I've done that a ton actually, I've tested things out. Um, I'm going Chronomancer, by the way. So I've picked things, changed things, and you know, sometime I went uh, full uh, strength, because I had a lot of gear that required more strength, so all these nodes were strength. Now I'm more into intelligence and dexterity, so I changed those, and you need gold for that. You know, and the first thing I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll go a crit chance build, but no, I'm not. I'm going to Chronomancer, not the other thing. So I changed that, I re took away some of these, and then specced into other things that could help me out you know uh, and don't copy me this is probably really shit I have no idea what I'm doing I'm still testing things out uh, but it's going you know we're getting through and that's the important thing and you have to use these these tools that the game gives you to go through this that's a little bit of thinking how you should think while approaching this game also if you find gear with sockets don't just slam anything on the sockets that you find. Save those for the runes that give you resistances. They will help you a ton. Okay, so let's get into the patch notes. Because I found, I found some really interesting things here that they brought up. Yeah, so they massively increase the drop rate of the regal orbs. Regal orbs are these ones. Those uh, makes a magic item into a rare item. Huge. So that's really good because I think my myself was struggling to find these. And then I haven't really found any gem cutter prisms so far, but they're essentially good to make your gems. Well, they increase the quality of your skill gems by 5% now. Wow, that's huge instead of 1. This basically increases the damage they will do. Lower the drop rate of chaos orbs and distribute it amongst other value currency like regal orbs and exalted orbs. This is very good because I don't find. So people are gonna be struggling a lot early game, right? And early game, you don't want to find chaos orbs. Chaos orbs are not useful early game. What they do is they change one random stat on a rare gear. Huh? Doesn't matter early game. So doing this change that you effectively increases the chances of getting a regal orb that's very useful early game is huge. It's gonna help people a lot. So these changes basically helps new players utilize these tools to overcome these challenges without making the game too simple or too easy. The game is still difficult and challenging but it's more manageable to, to say. And that's really huge. That's what we like here. This is this is more endgame stuff. I haven't been, I'm not even there yet, boys. And then they fix some bugs, fix a bug, 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 fix a bug. Okay, so that's the that's the things now, 
right? But if we look here at some announcements, they're, they're doing some more things that have not been de uh, deployed yet, which is really interesting. Now, the dodge roll. <sighs> this is a hot topic. Many people hate that you're getting body blocked by all these creatures. Yes, I found that annoying too, but I have to say that I'm one of the people that are in the... I kind of like it, gang, but I do have to say that I like the changes that you are able now to more easily roll out of these. So see here, player size is now set to zero while dodging instead of one unit. So this will make it easier to, you know, slip around those gaps between enemies. Really good. Some smaller monsters can now be pushed while dodge rolling. Okay, banger, huge. You know, if you see, uh, you know, because because uh, the thing I, I think, the thing I believe that people found annoying was when a bunch of small critters just, you know, swarms around you and you're essentially locked, you can't move anywhere and you're getting pushed, you know, pushed around in a corner. Being able to roll out and push them away, that makes sense, right? They're small, you can push them away. So that's really huge, that's really good. I, I think that's a huge, huge, huge change. But that's gonna make people less annoyed because we don't want to make it more challenging or annoying for new players because they're just gonna hate it they're just gonna stop playing the game right because we want the game to be difficult but we don't want it to be difficult in an annoying un like unsolvable way right we see that in the changes here with like with the orbs drop rate and things like that and also here with this dodge rolling mechanics we see that happening now and it's really good remember guys the game is still in early access it's just been five days the game has a long way to go still and we're making these changes so early and it's already improving I think Path of Exile 2 is gonna be great. It's gonna be in a much better position than it is now in like two or three months. It's gonna be crazy. This game is gonna be crazy, okay? Checkpoint changes, also huge. I myself was very annoyed that, you know, you go explore that way, oh, you found nothing, oh, now you have to explore all that way. That wasn't really a problem in Path of Exile 1 when I played because the maps were a lot smaller. Here, the maps. The maps are huge, my guy. They are huge. It takes it takes it takes me freaking half an hour to explore one whole area sometimes because you, you know you gotta be careful not to get swarmed by small critters and you can't roll dodge roll out, so you have to be careful how you engage in you know the packs and everything. So it, it's it's a slower game essentially. So making these changes, I think you're gonna be able to teleport, right? Checkpoint it will be allowed to teleport all checkpoints in the area explored on your minimap. Perfect, now you can teleport all the way up there to the other checkpoint all the way down there. Giga, giga change. Very nice. One of the major problems that players have been experiencing is feeling that the game is not rewarding enough. Yes, it's a hard game. This is the area that we have to be very careful with because, yeah, you can, exactly, you can't, if you tune it up, it's very hard to tune it down because people get mad. Okay, so they're working on the changes. Okay, so you gotta make it more rewarding. Uh, I, I think they're already already in a good way of solving this issue with, uh, with the orb changes things. Because I think that what this Path of Exile 2 aims to do is that they want, to, they want you to utilize crafting and buying from vendors a lot more. So crafting in essentially that even those white and magic item gears is valuable even though they're maybe right now at the moment weaker than what you are wearing. But you can craft on them and essentially make it, perhaps, if you're lucky on your roll, make it better. For example, with the staff I showed you, if you find a staff that gives you like more amount of damage or more cold damage, and you craft on that thing and get maybe plus two like cold skill gems, you will have a great staff that can carry you three or five acts forward. It's insane, my guy. Trust me. So that's why they're f finicking with that. Some rare monster changes, I don't find this very interesting right now. Currency changes, I don't find this very in Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Lesser jewel orbs drop rate increased around 33%. Uh, no, okay, so the, the jewelers orb are the lesser ones. They basically give you from two to three sockets. That is still good. It, they were, I did find some, but they were still really hard to find. I think my friend didn't find one until like act two or three. So yeah. And they helped your build a lot because even one more support skill can really make a a spell deal a lot more damage or be a lot more useful. Yeah, but I think that's essentially important topics that I wanted to cover. Don't feel discouraged while playing Advexal 2. You will die a lot. I've died a lot. 
I've been playing the game for 22 hours, it says, and I'm still only on Act 3. Don't stress it. Enjoy every moment with the game. It's a new game. It's a fun new game. And I understand that it's really difficult and it makes you angry. <laughs> I've been there as well. I've died from a boss. How many times have I died, actually? Let's say slash deaths. I've died 99 times! That's a lot! <laughs> That's a lot of deaths! <laughs> so don't feel discouraged, don't stress it. It's a new game. We haven't played this game before. It's not anything like Path of Exile 1. Okay, guys? So don't be stressed about it. Okay, enjoy your time with it. Keep playing, overcome the challenges, and enjoy the victories that you get while playing. Alright? So make sure that you use the tools that are disposable there for you. Use the vendors. And don't be afraid to make small mistakes. That's what I can say. Test out some things. If it didn't work, don't worry about it. Reset, you know. Do it again. If you're feeling stuck at a boss or you feel too weak, maybe you don't deal enough damage. Go on a side area. I explore a lot in this game. I think I've done every single like extra. See everything. There's nothing highlighted here. I've done every single extra side. Well, except for this thing because this thing is bugged. Tinker's tool. I think I wasted 40 minutes on that one. Fucking made me angry. So yeah, do the side things. They're really good. They give you good rewards and they're also fun to do. There's some challenging small bosses here and there. Really nice. Especially those with the plus sign, that gives you really good rewards, like permanent rewards, like spirit. And spirit is really good because then you can, uh, you can uh, activate, like cast on freeze is really good. So when I freeze an enemy, it will auto cast something else. I have arc, and I have this support gem on it. I think this is how it works. It will work on this one, so the arc will have 100% more chance to shock. So I cast, I freeze, and then it will cast an arc and hopefully shock. So if then I freeze and shock, and that will be two elements. So and then I have my flame wall that will also burn them. That's three elements, and then I'll deal a bunch more damage because in my passive tree, I have this thing that deals more damage when someone is ignited or shocked. You know, it's it's all these finicky combos. You know, so you want to experiment and try things out like that. Like that, it's very fun. It's very fun. Also, you can also have, you know, auras like Arctic Armor that give, makes you more tanky and you reserve it with the spirit. Yeah. So that's that. Thank you guys so much for listening in. If you have any other questions or thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. I will answer them for you. Or just, you know, discuss things. So thank you guys for checking in. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you very soon. Drop it out! Whoa, wait, wait, bye-bye!